Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome back to my Game Engine series. So last time we talked about camera controllers, definitely check out that video if you haven't already. We basically implemented this orthographic camera controller so that we could put all the behavior for that camera controller in a separate class um, and basically have it do whatever we want it to do based on the input that we receive from our keyboard and mouse. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what happens when our window resizes because currently in Hazel, if we just take a look, if we try and resize this window that we have here to a different size, it doesn't really work properly. You can see that if I try and make it bigger, for example, or I try and maximize it, then we have this kind of cut, cut off region where I, like I can still move the camera, but you can see this area here is not kind of being rendered whatsoever, which is kind of annoying. And that's basically because we're not setting that up properly whatsoever. All we're doing is we're handling a window resize of the GLFW, and that is kind of resizing uh, the area in a way, but it's not really at all. So to handle this stuff properly, we have to ask ourselves, what does a resize actually do? What does it mean? And for us specifically, resizing has a number of different effects, essentially. First of all, um, we, need to, we need to think about our actual rendering buffer. So when we render everything in OpenGL, we render it to a destination, meaning that these pixels that we're kind of outputting from our fragment shader, not really outputting from our fragment shader, but you get the point. The pixels that we're actually rendering, they need to go somewhere. They need to be stored somewhere in memory. The size of that buffer has to be the size of the available pixels that we're rendering on our screen. Now, there's a lot of different considerations that go into this. For example, it's quite common perhaps to render at like half the resolution and then scale that final buffer up. And then what happens though eventually with that is that final buffer still has to be the amount of pixels that we have on our screen. So basically what I'm saying is it's not just as simple as resizing our window. We need to actually tell OpenGL that the rendering area has changed. We do that using something called GL viewport. What that does is basically just sets the viewport that we're rendering into. This is kind of useful if you're rendering to multiple viewports as well. So for example, if you've seen like a 3D modeling application, it's like a 3D rendering kind of program where you have like all your different viewports being displayed, there might be like a perspective one and then like, you know, left, top, right, or left, top, um, what's the other one? Left, top, front, right? Something like that. Um, that's also an example of kind of setting viewports where we may want to render different views from different cameras um, and then kind of composite that all into one frame at the end. But we're not trying to do anything complicated like that. All we need to do as far as, view, uh, as, far as viewports are concerned is just tell OpenGL that this is my rendering area. It's changed from being like, you know, 0 to 1280 and then 0 to 720 to being like zero to 1920, because we've actually expanded that area. And the fact that OpenGL doesn't know that is really the cause of why these pixels are getting cut off. Because as far as it's concerned, you know, if we flip back to the uh, example that we have here, as far as it's concerned, that initial rendering area that we created our application with, that is what it has kind of stayed at, right? So this kind of rendering area where you can see everything kind of renders correctly, which is when we created our window with a size of 1280 by 720. When we resize that window, it still thinks that it's going from zero, which is the bottom left corner, to 1280 by 720, right? However, you can see there's much more space. We just haven't communicated that to OpenGL, so we need to do that. The other consideration doesn't affect us just yet, but in the future, we won't be rendering straight away to the screen, or we won't be basically rendering into, uh, just into OpenGL land without actually creating our own frame buffers. In the future, we'll actually set up our own frame buffers. And because we set up our own frame buffers, they also need to get notified that the kind of size of our window or the size of our rendering area has changed because we'll have to actually resize those textures, resize those frame buffers. I'm not really sure if it's worth considering that the Hazel development branch, which by the way is available to patrons, patreon.com forward slash the churno is the best way to support this series and everything that I do here on YouTube. Um, the Hazel development branch already handles all of that stuff because we're not rendering, like that's got like a full HDR pipeline. So we're actually rendering to like a floating point buffer, floating point texture, and then that is eventually being rendered again as a quad onto the screen. So because of that, if there is a window resize, not to mention like Hazel Dev has like a full kind of like viewer and like editor application. And so because of that, um, we're not, re we're not actually rendering to the screen. We're rendering to, we have to render to a texture anyway, because that texture then gets rendered into a panel because it's like a full kind of dockable layout 
um, set up in that application. So because of that, it's a little bit more complicated um, because, you know, even if you do like, you know, resize other panels and make the viewport smaller, it has to be able to handle that. So ultimately my point is that we need resizing to work and we need it to work across probably frame buffers in the future or definitely frame buffers in the future because if we just kind of limit it to our window, that's not going to be good enough. So the, the way that this like typically works is that um, because the other thing with frame buffers that you have to consider is that frame buffers are not all the size of your window. If you're rendering like a final kind of destination buffer or like even an intermediate scene buffer, a lot of these buffers are probably going to be like a one to one kind of ratio between your available rendering area and you know, what you're actually setting your frame buffer to be. That's totally reasonable. However, think about like, I don't know if you're rendering like um, an intermediate buffer or some kind of shadow map or anything like that where you, you know, maybe like a, a, a certain like render pass for blurring or whatever, you don't need that to be full resolution. You don't want to tie that to the screen width and height. It still might be useful to know if the window has been resized because for example, if you're keeping one of these buffers exactly 50% of the resolution of um, your kind of full frame kind of buffer, then you do need to still know if the windows change, right? It might not necessarily be a fixed 1024 by 1024 buffer. It might be like a, a kind of a percentage or some kind of, um, uh, just like some kind of a ratio, we'll say, from the actual available rendering area that is our window. So because of that, you still need to be notified about resizing, but it just might not be um, about resizing that frame buffer to be the exact width and height of your available screen rendering area. So there's all of these complicated things that you need to, th that you need to think about that don't, that might not, might not occur to you immediately if you haven't like built kind of an engine before. Um, you don't even need to have built much of an engine like to run into these problems because if, as soon as you kind of think about the fact that you're not rendering to the full screen, you're rendering to a frame buffer, this kind of resizing stuff will begin to affect you anyway. But my point more so is that the two stages are telling OpenGL that our rendering area has changed and then notifying all of our frame buffers that there's been a change in the actual screen resolution and then we can kind of um, either resize the buffer or do something like that. Now that second part, I don't think we're gonna worry about too much today. We'll still set it up in a way that it will work. Um, usually what you would have is something called like a frame buffer pool, which is just like a, a, all of your frame buffers go into this kind of central storage kind of collection. That way you can recycle them as well if you need to. But ultimately, um, because of that, the application will, will be, um, it will know about all frame buffers that you actually have. And therefore it can kind of iterate over them and tell them there's been a window resize. And then based on what type of frame buffer that is, for example, if it's like a render buffer that fills a screen, in that case, it can resize its textures and recreate itself basically, which is what it's gonna have to do. Um, but that isn't necessary, for example, if you just have a 1024 by 1024 shadow map or something like that that you don't really care about um, resizing based on the resolution. Because um, yeah, in, like in 3D applications, that might not be necessary for all things. The other thing that I kind of forgot to mention, but I'm gonna mention now is the camera. So uh, this again depends on what you're going for because we have an orthographic camera here. Now what happens if we resize the window? We have two options. We either make everything bigger, right? So the, the squares that used to be 100 by 100 effective pixels on our screen might now be 150 by 150 effective pixels on our screen. Why? Because everything's increased. They're just gonna be physically bigger because we've made the window bigger. Or do we want more stuff to fit onto the screen, right? So because we've got, you know, this much more available area on our monitor, on our monitor, maybe we want um, just to fit more of these squares onto the screen because we've, we're basically kind of taking a step back. We're just expanding the area in which we're kind of looking at, which basically means that if we resize the window, we're cropping it. We're not scaling it down, we're cropping it. So that's another consideration that's totally up to you. Depends, um, totally depends on the game that you're trying to make. Um, the problem with that can be if someone resizes their window too, too small, if they've got a low, low resolution device or something like that, then they will just, they might not be able to play a game because everything's, nothing's gonna fit onto the screen. I mean, like UI and stuff, you probably anchor to like, you know, right side of the screen, top side, whatever. And that way when you resize and you do all of that stuff, it's gonna work fine. Um, however, with, uh, you know, with the actual game and all of the rendering to do with the game, that might not be resized correctly, right? You might, you might end up making that, you might end up making your camera view so kind of small, 
right? Because you've cropped it in so much that you just won't be able to play the game. In that case, it might be better to kind of actually squeeze everything else and make everything smaller. So again, up to you, but that's definitely something you need to consider. This isn't really a consideration for 3D cameras. In that case, you pretty much always just make, um, you know, you, you, you end up making everything smaller because that's just, you know, a, a, a like a perspective projection is just gonna work that way. But with an orthographic projection, um, you know, the way that we zoom in and out, as you know, is just by setting our boundaries. So in that case, um, in my experience, you know, orthographic cameras usually lend themselves pretty well to just being like, I'm gonna fit more into the screen now because my screen's bigger. So lots of stuff to think about. Let's get this uh, initial work done, which is going to be to expand the rendering area so that we can actually uh, see everything um, fill up our entire window. So if we open the Windows window class, which contains all of our events that actually come in, this is how we know about a resize, right? So if we look at um, the, GL the GLFW callback for it, we have a set window size callback. This uh, window resize event gets triggered every time um, our window actually changes size, right? And we can test that really easily by just simply uh, writing in a little, uh, we'll say H set core, uh, I'll do a warning just so it shows up yellow. Um, and then we'll basically just write in our window size. So zero comma one, and then we'll say width height. All right, so just by using something like this, we can uh, just check that that's kind of coming in right. Okay, and then um, let's just bring up that console so we have nothing at the moment. But if I start changing the size here, um, you can see that dynamically, as I'm actually still changing it, all of those events coming in is telling me the size of my window in pixels. So that's really good because that's kind of what we need to use to actually make everything else work. So this is triggered as an event, which means that it does actually get called and it does actually get propagated down our event stack, which basically means that everything that, that subscribes to events should receive this unless something blocks it. So um, for us, what we need to think about is where this actually gets triggered. Um, now, where we handle this is most likely going to be in the application class. Um, that of course is platform independent. Um, and this is what actually dispatches all of our events down our layer stack. So the same way that we kind of hook into this on window close event, we also need to hook into on window resize. Um, and this will be a window resize event. I'm just gonna use the event dispatcher of course here like we did before. Uh, resize event, um, and then if we pop over to the header file, we will add a on window resize, and this will just be window resize event. Okay, cool. So now we've got that event. Um, if we find the on window close event, I'm just gonna copy it and make the same thing for our window resize. So on window resize, just implementing that function here, window resize event. Um, we will definitely return false because we don't want anything else to block this. Um, as in, we, we want all the layers that are subscribed to, uh, to this kind of event to actually know about the event because it's, it might be important for them. Um, and then we need to think about what we actually do here. So there's a few considerations that I wanna kind of talk about um, to do with window resizing. Uh, first of all, what happens if the window is minimized? So typically what will happen is the width and height will be resized to zero because our window isn't actually taking up any space on our screen, it's been minimized, right? So what I can actually do is test this out. Um, I'll just open up the application um, just by hitting F5. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is set a breakpoint on this once we know that it hasn't received any events at the beginning. And then I'm just gonna hit minimize and see what we actually get coming into this on window resize event. Okay, so Hazel is now running. I'm just gonna hit a break, I'm just gonna set a breakpoint on to return false, and then I'm just gonna minimize. Okay, so you can see that this breakpoint gets hit, and if we look at E um, to see what our values actually are, you can see the width and height are both set to zero. So this happens when the window gets minimized. Now there's a problem with our current, the, the way that things work when windows are minimized. We can't see our application. However, if we look at run and we take a look at this, for example, this is all still running, all right? So all of our layers are being updated. Everything's being still rendered, even though our, our um, window is minimized. So that's a little bit silly. We don't want to be doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, create a little if statement here that says if e dot get width um, equals zero or get height equals zero. I mean they should both be zero, but it doesn't really matter if either of them is zero. We don't want to render anything because we've got nothing to render to. Um, we'll return false uh, so we won't do anything else in this function. Um, but then I'll also set something called minimized to true. 
And this is just going to be a boolean that we uh, have over here. So the same way that we have running, I'll also make a little, and I'll actually make this on a separate line, um, minimized equals false, right? And then what's gonna happen is that if our window is minimized, um, and then obviously if, uh, if we get past that, then minimize should be set to false because we won't be minimized. But um, if, we, uh, if we get past this, or rather if we set minimize to true here in our run loop, what we wanna do, we can still measure like, you know, last frame time or whatever, but the, the basic thing that we don't wanna do is do any kind of layer up updating. Now, I am GUI layer is something different. Um, and we might still want to do I am GUI rendering because you'll notice that if we minimize our main window, I am GUI might be docked out and it might be doing its own stuff. So because of that, you know, we might still want to be doing that, but layers definitely shouldn't be updated. So if not minimized, we're going to actually update our layer stack. Um, and again, yeah, we could definitely like minimize, we could definitely deal with this as well. Um, and just put that in there. And in fact, if we were to be like really pedantic, we definitely don't need to be swapping buffers if the window's minimized. We can still pull events, obviously. Um, we'll need to do that actually, but the swap buffers doesn't really need to be triggered at all. But we're not gonna worry too much about that. Um, for now, that should be fine. And if I do run it like this, then you'll see that if I minimize this, um, then we should not be running this anymore. And you can see this I'm GUI window becomes unresponsive. That's because of that. That's why I didn't wanna put it in there. Um, so let's take a look at this one more time and we'll take it out and do it the way that I wanted to do it. I just wanted to demonstrate why um, that was important because uh, this, this is kind of our main rendering area. This is not dealing with any I am GUI windows, which by the way, you would not have in a, in a distribution kind of version of this project, right? So if you actually ship your game using Hazel, you're not gonna have any I am GUI layer stuff. So this is just for like the editor kind of application or any kind of tools that it supplies. So if we minimize this now, you can see this is still kind of responsive because it's still doing all that stuff. But what's not happening is this is minimized. So none of our layers, as you can see, we skip past that because minimize is true. None of our layers are being updated, which is really good because that's where we'll be doing all of the kind of intensive drawing. So if we minimize our application, it won't be using all of our CPU time for our computer or our GPU trying to render everything even though it doesn't need to. So that's one thing that we should do um, upon window resize. Anyway, now that we've done that, um, you know, we obviously know the get width and get height. And in fact, if we look at Windows window um, and we look at this again, you can see that uh, we actually, I don't think this is the case, but M data, okay, M data width and M data height. Okay, good. So our width and height are actually changed for our window, which is good. So if we query the window at any point and we ask it what the width and height is, then it will just, it'll know, right? Because it'll um, it'll look at this and uh, we'll, it'll, it will actually update our data, which is important because we obviously want that new width, the new height to be in our current width and current height for our window. Now, the next step here is going to be um, basically just telling the application that it's changed. So for this again, what we would usually do is basically look at the frame buffer pool or at least tell the renderer in some way or another, hey renderer, um, and if we look at, I don't know how we do this here. Uh, so we have renderer init and then what do we do? We basically just propagate layers, okay, cool. Um, we basically need to tell the renderer that, um, that the frame buffer is kind of resized. If we take a look at our render API, I just need to do this now. We have uh, in it begin scene and scene, all that stuff. Cool. What we'll actually do is, um, this is all fully static at the moment, which is fine. What I'll do is I will add something called uh, on window resize, which is just going to be an event. Um, this will take in, uh, we'll just say width and height. It's really all we need. We'll keep it simple. Um, I'll go ahead and implement that. And then what this is going to do is just issue a render command, uh, which is gonna be called set viewport. And this is gonna set the viewport um, from zero, zero to width and height. So uh, again, this, this is some code that you may have to change if you're rendering multiple viewports because upon window resize, you don't wanna immediate, immediately set the viewport to this. Um, this will need to be reworked based on frame buffers that are added in the, in the future, but this is just the simplest way to get this up and running right now. So that's why I'm running code like this. Um, I just wanna stress, and I mean, I do that enough, um, but I just wanna stress that in this series, I will, uh, I'll put this here actually. In this series, I will very often write code that is 
um, somewhat temporary because it has to work with our current code base. There's no way I can kind of write this complete um, engine from scratch uh, and just have everything perfect from the beginning because that's just not gonna work at all. So just keep in mind that the stuff may change. Um, we'll add that in direction as we always do. So set viewport and then X, Y width height. And then I'll go to our render API. Um, and then I'll create that stuff. Uh, set viewport. I'll just copy all of these um, arguments here and paste them into here. And then a last step is the OpenGL render API. We're going to just stick that in. Okay, so set viewport x, y with height. Um, and then if we go into here, uh, let me just copy like a bit of this. And then I'll just replace it with that. Okay, and then what this is gonna do is call GL viewport x, y with height, just like we wanted to. All right, so that's the underlying OpenGL command that we call. Um, and now if we go over to, uh, let's see, so our renderer should do that on window resize and it looks like it does, which is good. If we go to application, we just do renderer on window resize um, and we just do e.getWidth, e.getHeight. And if we hit F5, then uh, we should have everything working basically. It should now render to the entire screen area and not just the 1280 by 720 viewport that we originally had. So if I maximize this, you can see it now fills the screen. All right, and then if I like make this smaller, you can see that um, should still kind of, you know, keep the camera in mind. So you can see the ratio is staying the same here, but um, you know, if we make it bigger or smaller or whatever, you can see that everything is rendered because it now is aware of our actual render, render size, which is good. Now, the next step, which is optional, because that might be exactly what you're going for, right? But the next step, which is optional, might be to actually make everything smaller or bigger. Because you can see what's happening now is no matter what size we're actually at, everything's gonna stay the same size, see? So this channel logo takes up, you know, a percentage of this kind of screen width and height. And then no matter how big I make this, if I maximize it, it still kind of is the same, right? Everything just gets scaled up or down depending on how much rendering area we're working with. Now, what you might want to do instead um, is actually show more or less based on that, right? So don't change the size of the scene, um, just change basically the viewport into the scene. So to do that, we need to change our camera projection matrix. So what we can do is again, over here in on event, we can hook into, um, I'll just do this here. I don't think I'll actually keep this because I kind of like the way that things are. Um, or maybe I will, <laughs> we'll see what it looks like. So what I'll do is I'll just do, um, uh, let's see, if e dot uh, get event type equals event type. So I haven't done anything this way in a while, but I just don't want to write a dispatcher. Um, Right now, what we'll do is a window, it's event type window resize. So if it's a window resize event, we'll, we'll just cast it into that. So Hazel window resize event E. Uh, and we'll actually say that that's our uh, resize event, RE. Um, so get width and get height is what we're dealing with now. So to do something like this though, what you actually need to do is think about what the uh, projection matrix originally is, right? So what we actually set it to, and this is why I probably wouldn't recommend you do this, but what, what we actually set it to um, is an aspect ratio um, multiplied by our zoom level, right? So effectively what should happen is the zoom should go in and out. That's kind of what we're talking about here. Um, if, the, if the orthographic camera was simply set to be the size of your window, meaning that instead of this kind of aspect ratio zoom level stuff where, where it could be potentially like, you know, minus 16 to positive 16 or something like that. Um, in, if instead of that, you just had zero to 1280 and zero to 720 as your actual orthographic camera projection matrix. Um, if that was the case, then you just simply change it to be the size of the window now. And that's usually how UI would probably be done. You probably do that in kind of like a per pixel basis. You wouldn't do it like this, which is kind of what you might render your game world in. But um, since we don't have that, we effectively just need to set the zoom level. So that should not be too difficult. Um, our zoom level starts at one, which is our main kind of, so a 1280 by 720, one is kind of what we're dealing with. What we just need to do is basically have a little um, set zoom level 
Uh, so we'll basically have a float level um, and I'll just set zoom level to be whatever level is. Okay, so then what this will do, and I guess um, I'll add a get zoom level as well. So this will just return zoom level. I'll put the getter first um, as I always do. Uh, so now what we should be able to do is basically just uh, set our camera zoom, zoom level. So camera controller dot says zoom level. And what this will have to be is a function based on the width and height and what it's changed to. Now this is difficult because we, do, we basically need to pick one, right? Because um, we can't do both, right? And especially because our window doesn't have to be the same aspect ratio as it was before. But what we can do is say that um, the width, which is this thing. So we'll say, let's just say float zoom. So the width we know is whatever our window width is. Now at 1280, if the width is 1280, that is a zoom level of one, right? So it's pretty easy for us to say, well, in that case, um, and this will be complicated by the fact that, uh, you know, we have to flip this later, but it doesn't matter. If we divide um, our width, which we need to cast into a float probably, and this is Ari. Um, if we divide our width by 1280, we get a zoom level of one, right? And then what we actually want to do is flip that so that um, if we kind of make it smaller or bigger, because the thing is at this particular point, if we actually make the window smaller, it will zoom in more. Um, and we can test that out actually by just putting this into here. We'll test this out by just resizing the window, right? So if I make this smaller, you can see we actually zoom in. Whereas what we probably wanted to do was kind of zoom out in a way, but hang on a minute. Uh... We're already doing that actually. I just totally forgot about this. So yeah, so in other words, what we probably should be doing is touching our zoom level, which um, you can see that um, that doesn't even get affected here. Okay, so this is a lot more complicated than I thought. Um, so I'm kind of gonna probably backpedal on most of this because the thing is um, our zoom level, especially when we set the zoom level, doesn't recalculate our projection like at all. So not to mention the fact that I think yeah, so camera controller on events happening here and then the zoom level is being affected. So this um, setting the zoom level isn't enough. We actually have to reset the projection um, completely. So that's not gonna work at all. If we actually get rid of this stuff and hit F5, then what we should find is that if we resize in one axis, this actually should work already. It's only if we resize in both the X and Y axis that everything should get bigger because the aspect ratio doesn't really change neither does the zoom level. So if I actually just expand this, right, you can see that more stuff will fit onto the screen, right? Which is kind of what we want. It's only when we resize it in both axes that is that, does it actually end up making everything smaller. And to stop that, what you would actually need to do is just expand both of the boundaries. That's kind of what zoom is for, to expand and to kind of zoom in and out. Um, and it does that by just shifting the boundaries around. But the, with the design of this orthographic camera control, there's probably, probably no point in doing that because it's gonna knock off our zoom level completely um, and it's not gonna make that stuff happen. So um, in other words, uh, this is actually a really good hybrid approach, which I didn't even realize that I'd done um, because we did actually do that stuff. You can see if you had like an ultra wide monitor or something, then more would fit onto the screen, right? So if I move this like left or right, um, uh, like this and zoom in and out or whatever, you can see that I can actually physically fit more onto my screen than for example, if I was like on a portrait phone um, where I can't actually fit more than just that. So that's kind of cool. Um, it means that we can do that and the same thing would, would kind of work vertically, right? So if I was kind of um, like this, but then I was able to introduce more uh, vertical room just like that, then you can see that it actually does make everything smaller or bigger because that aspect ratio is kind of dependent on one axis, which is the width. So in a way, that's pretty much exactly what I wanted to achieve. Um, you could play around with this a little bit more to customize it to your liking. If you are considering doing something like this, which might be useful for like UI rendering, the projection matrix you would choose would be one that kind of matches your pixel count anyway. So in other words, instead of dealing with like an um, arbitrary kind of uh, bound, boundaries, which is what we're doing right now. We're just kind of setting it to aspect ratio time to zoom. What you would do instead is actually have like from zero to 1280, as I mentioned before, and zero to 720, which is your actual pixel count. And in that, in that sense, it would make sense to actually, 
um, resize it because then you could just make it, you could just make the new width and height. It will still start from zero, but the new width and height would be however, however many pixels you actually have available to you. So anyway, that's pretty much how resizing works and how I would handle it. Again, in the future, when we do introduce frame buffers, it's going to be really important to actually propagate these, these resize changes to those frame buffers so that they're aware that the screen has actually changed because we won't be rendering to the screen in the future. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. You can also help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of stuff that I've talked about in this episode has already been done there. Um, and not to mention, I'm actually, I've am actually i actually started working on the 2D renderer for Hazel in that development branch. So if you want to check out the 2D renderer and um, batching and all of this kind of stuff that uh, is actually um, I guess working now, then check that out. I don't think I've pushed that yet because I'm also just wrapping up a commit which which introduces multi-threading into Hazel Dev. Uh, so basically we have our entire rendering stuff running on a separate um, render thread. Uh, so that stuff I think I'm, I haven't really pushed yet. So as soon as that push is done, the 2D rendering will also be done. Um, so exciting stuff there, definitely check it out and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you.